Today's video is all about this exciting soup. You're going to enjoy this. Today I'm going to make potato soup. This is a recipe I've been making since I was a kid. No, seriously. I've been making it a long, long time. And I learned some neat things about making soup from this recipe. I learned that when it comes to soup making, variety is the spice of life. This video is a direct result of another video I produced a few weeks ago, which was about stocking your pantry. And uh, I made reference in that, that if you have, you know, potato flakes sitting around and you keep, you know, a couple of boxes of that stuff, that, um, you know, in an, a pinch, if there's nothing else available, if you don't have potatoes, you can still make a cream of potato soup real easy. So today we're going to make potato soup. It doesn't even have to be a cream of potato, but frankly, I love cream of potato soup. Now, a little background here. This soup I've had since, oh gosh, since I was a boy. Okay, so I've had this soup recipe for a very, 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 very long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm really that old. <laughs> so anyway, I've had this soup recipe for a long time and I'm wanting to share it with you and it is so easy to make and it's based on stuff people commonly have around. Winter vegetables and stuff that may be sitting in, sitting in the pantry. Uh, so this is a potato flake potato soup and it's going to be kind of a cream of it. It's really hearty. And we're going to discuss all the different things that you can put in a soup like this and how you can mold it and shape it and change it and make it yours. All the different additions that you can put in it. Folks, there's a lot of stuff and a lot of ways of molding this recipe into dozens of different soups. So let me teach you a cool way of making soup. It's pretty simple and it's absolutely delicious. This is potato soup. Let's get in the kitchen. Come on. Boy, I've got some fantastic looking ingredients here. This is a simple recipe, but it is chock full of nutrition and good flavor. So let's spell it out. It starts right here. We've got some potato flakes. Potato flakes, water, broth. Now you got your choice here. Use some vegetable broth if you want if you want to make this like a vegetarian dish, if you want to, you don't care. If you want to go chicken broth, you can do that also. To that, we're going to be using also some heavy cream. That's also called whipping cream. I've got some cheese back here. This is sharp cheddar cheese, diced ham, onion, carrots, garlic, and our spices. We've got some white pepper and mustard right there. Oh, good, delicious ingredients. Let's get busy cooking. It starts with getting the mash made and cooking up those veggies. Going to be cutting up and prepping the vegetables. First thing I want to do though, I got to get this paper off the garlic. I went ahead and prepped the onion by removing the upper part of the onion. Just cut it flat and then took off one outer layer so I get it down to a nice usable piece there. I like to leave the root intact. Makes it easier to work. Keeps a lot of the juices from flowing out. Okay, our garlic, simple enough. Need a dish to put my garlic in. You do not have to do this. I mean, if you want to take all of your vegetables as you cut them and put them in the pan you're gonna be cooking them up in, that's fine. But remember, I do teach the setup method on this. So my assumption is, is it might be an hour or two before the soup is made. We go ahead and do the mise en place, which is everything in its place. And that way you've got all of your product ready to be used. You don't have to worry about cutting something up. There's skin on that. You don't have to worry about cutting something up while something else might be burning or left unattended. We don't want that. The garlic, this is simple today. Crush and light chop. Just like that. And then just a little bit. We don't have to go crazy with it. We just don't want a whole bunch of big pieces in the pot. Small pieces, fine. Okay, because after a cook, 
those are going to hide real well right in here so that's all there is for the garlic the onion this is a simple little thing put my bowl out of the way there my original cut that came up the side is right here and so, so a lot of times I will line up s close to that sometimes it takes off a sliver of onion sometimes not depending on uh, how close I am all right so right there I went ahead and cut the onion down into a couple of parts now I did um, what I want to do is I'm going to teach you two different ways to dice an onion out and you pick whichever method is most comfortable for you method number one which is taught to chefs in culinary schools and this has been taught for a long time okay and it's not the only method that's taught there's other methods but this is one of okay so the first thing we, we have to do is acknowledge the fact that you have several layers that are wrapping all the way around a core and you want to get square pieces over here and you want to get square pieces up here and the only way to do that is to cut three different directions so we cut this way cutting through here and we cut this way and then we cut this way to make our dice so let's do that real quick fingers on top together just like this right on top bring the blade up the width of the dice that you want to make all right and i want some medium substantial dice on this so three eighths to half inch dice is what i'm looking for here okay probably come out closer to three eighths on this now let me mention when you're pushing that knife into an onion a lot of times you get that blade in so far it just locks up on you and doesn't want to move if you'll take the blade and twist it a little bit like this it breaks the suction and allows movement so here I have I have cut this in such a way that when I make cross cuts this way these onions are going to come right out as perfect squares when I do this cut however if I do this cut I'll just have a bunch of long cuts here so I need to make cross cuts from here to here straight down again the same width that I'm looking to make my onion is now prepared to make dice with so this here 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 and so you can see why chefs do this it's quite practical for them and then we don't want to waste material so we clean that core boom perfectly diced onion without any waste okay now the next method this one is a lot easier okay I know that method right there is kind of advanced all right so let me show you a simpler method instead of making that cross cut this way what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a variety of cuts we're just going to make downward cut here to quarter that all right now that it's quartered it's going to be a lot easier to work something I want to mention before we go further is how you hold things on the hand that holds the food don't hold your food like this because you're going to cut your fingertips okay you'll eventually get your thumb it won't be any fun okay keep those fingers turned under when I hold this to cut it I keep my hand like this so that this knuckle then becomes my cutting guide to the blade right there isn't that nice and so when I do that I get a good cut that's even without my fingers being in danger okay we call that the crab technique keep the tips underneath keep this part of the the finger straight up keep the thumb behind and it'll help control the food and sometimes you have to turn them sideways or whatever but it's still the crab on this keep your knife pinch that knife you never want your knife to suddenly roll on you it's dangerous when it does that pinch it and it'll stop that we're going to make a downward plunge here and we'll come up and make a downward plunge here and I want to do the same thing on this side and then another one down here keeping that together here we go one two three four five and there is our diced onion just that easy a little easier than the other technique do you think some people th see it that way so you can see how when I do that it gives me squares that when I cut get turned into lovely dice Isn't that cool everybody needs to know those two techniques there we go 
Got those all cleaned up. I like to kind of clean up after myself as I go. Something I do want to mention is if you'll notice where my knife is and how I keep it sitting on my board. I'll usually keep it up here or off to the side, something like that. But I always try to remember to set it not like this, but like this. If you have your knife like this, you can run your hand along that edge. Boom, suddenly you're bleeding all over your pretty cutting board. You don't want that. Keep him turned away so that, that cut won't happen, all right? Just like that. The last part of this simple little job is grating the carrots. Now I just need to take my carrot, run him through my handy dandy little grater here, keep a bowl underneath it. These graters are practical, but they can sometimes be a little bit messy. <laughs> like that. Okay. However, the neat thing of it is you end up with this beautiful shredded product that cooks up so nice and even. Everything is just alike. Makes for good soup. To make this wonderful soup, we start with the water. Get him, get that into a big pot. Now, you're gonna be needing a, lot, a sizable pot because you've got a lot of ingredients to work with. I'm using an eight quart, okay? And I'm just gonna start with the mash in the eight quart, even though it's not nearly enough to fill it. We're gonna be adding a lot more stuff to this, remember? So, I'll turn this on high. I'm gonna put it on another burner to do that. Right over here in this pot, I'm gonna go ahead and get my broth in this. I am turning it on to a high heat and I'm gonna bring this to a boil. The whole idea is we're gonna cook all of our vegetables and get them t nice and tender in this pot. At the same time, I wanna cook off some of the uh, liquid that is in this broth. Now our vegetables, we can go right in here with them. Oh yeah. They're nice. Get our garlic in here. Oh yes. Just a matter of waiting for these to come up in temperature and to start cooking. As soon as this comes up and starts to simmer, I'll put a lid on here cocked and I'll cook it down until I've cooked off about a half a cup to maybe a cup of the total liquid. The uh, mash, I just gotta get it boiling and get the flakes hydrated. So as this comes up in heat, just gonna give it a little time, get everything mixed together well. We're just gonna let this simmer until it simmers off, oh, about three quarters of a cup to a cup of that liquid. When it has, then this is ready to go down into the mash that we're making. And then we move on to creaming it and turning it into delicious. The water has come up to a boil. I just need to pour in my flakes and we are done. When you put in your flakes, go ahead and turn off the heat because it's gonna foam up a little bit on you. See there? There we are. And just give it a gentle stir one quick time. That's all that's needed. No other care is needed on those potatoes. From there, they're ready to go. Looky there, isn't that beautiful? That is what I'm talking about. That's what we were looking for So we're gonna let this cook for a little bit. And what I wanna do is I wanna put a lid on here. I wanna let it cook for long enough to get about, well, half of the cooking done on the onion. So lid, and I wanna reduce this down to a medium low and just let it sit and simmer down like that. It'll be just fine. My vegetables have almost finished cooking down. I've got yeah, that liquid's reduced quite a bit. It is getting a little bit stronger in flavor, and that's what I want, and those onions are about translucent. Okay, so we're there for the most part. I'm going to take this, turn off the heat, and get it poured down into my mashed potatoes, stir that in, and then we start the next process, which is adding cream, bring it up in temperature slowly over a low heat, and then once you're about 150 degrees, start adding in that cheddar cheese to melt it. And any time during that process, we can add in our spices as well. 
So keep a thermometer handy. You don't want to curdle anything. All right, even though we're using cream, and it's kind of hard to curl that. You, it can be done. You can turn it into cheese, all right? Too much heat will do that to dairy products. So that's our next step and where we're going with it. Something I wanted to mention, in addition to the ham and the all other items that we already have in this pot, there's other vegetables you can add to this. You can just put up some chopped up broccoli in there, the same way you would in a cheese soup. You can put in some celery or cauliflower, mushrooms, all kinds of different things can go in this dish. It's up to you to kind of experiment and turn it into yours. All right, let's take a look. Now I can already tell from where my fluid line on the pan was earlier that I've lost a good deal of my fluid here. I've lost about one third of it, which is about a cup, which is what I was wanting to cook out. And I have a much stronger, richer broth now. This is going to make much better soup. Just simple processes like this that really bumps up flavor and, and, and improves overall quality. Turning off the heat for this, I'm gonna move it back here. Let's get it poured in to our mash and we're on making soup. All right, let's take this. We're just gonna pour it right down, right down in there. Anything left in that pot? Yeah, just take your rubber spatula too. So here we go. At this stage, I'm just spoon work this in. In a little bit as we go putting in other ingredients, we're gonna switch to the, uh, the whisk and get a better mix. All right, add about a quarter of my cream or a little less or more, or just get some in there. And the whole idea of working, um, when you have a stiff product, working small amounts of liquid into it, it helps to cut down on the possibility of lumps. I don't want a big old potato lump in the middle of this, okay? I just want little bits of delicious food all mixed together in a nice thick liquid. So here we go. A little more heavy cream. And of course you might say, well, that's what a whisk is for. Yeah, it is. But a whisk, unless you've got a really heavy tined whisk, is really better once it's been brought down a little bit, like it is now. So it's thinner, it's workable. Now I can put a whisk in there. At the same time, I'm gonna put a heat under this pot. I want it to be medium low, the very highest I want it to be. And um, the whole idea here is I need to heat this cream up and I don't want to heat it too quickly, number one, and I don't want to get it too hot, number two, because, you know, it's dairy product, and what does dairy do if you overheat it? That's right, it curdles. We don't want that. So, we're going to work it out that way. Now, let's talk about what all can go into this pot. I'm putting in some cheese and ham. If I wanted, I could dice up a bunch of broccoli and throw the broccoli in there. If I wanted, I could put some cauliflower or, or celery in this. I could do thin slices of uh, fennel stalks or anise is what some people call it. Uh, mushrooms, all kinds of goodies that I can put in this pot and enhance this and turn it into any other kind of soup I want. And that's the advantage of this recipe. It is like so universally, um, it's flexible. You can turn it into anything. It's, it's sort of a universal good way of making soup. You get this nice thick base of uh, cream and potatoes. And if it's too thick, you can always add a little bit of milk to help thin that down, okay? That's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna check my temperature. Always have some thermometers around. They're the great thing in, under the sun. So right here, 142, 45, 148. So we're floating in that high 140s range and I can start getting my cheese in there. Generally, I won't put my cheese in until it's right about 150. But you know what? <laughs> we're close enough, aren't we? Now 
waiting for that cheese to melt. Let's talk about our spices here. We've got some beautiful ground spices and I want two teaspoons of the ground mustard. I don't want any of those lumps that I felt there. So sometimes when you're pouring out your spices, you get lumps like that. Want to be careful, just break those apart because you don't want somebody getting a mustard lump in their soup. Trust me, they will not like you for that, okay? <laughs> it will not be fun for them. It won't be fun for you. Time for a little white pepper. Okay, so again, one. Oops, I'm seeing some clumps there. There, there's two. And a third one, third teaspoon there. Right there, number three. All right, get that stirred in. This little guy right here, this MSG, monosodium glutamate. You've heard all kinds of tales about how this is terrible for you. There's about a half a teaspoon. That's about all it takes, okay? What MSG does, it doesn't do anything to the food itself. It actually has an effect on your tongue. It opens certain taste receptors in your tongue, allowing you to taste parts of the food you weren't able to taste before, or to taste it more fully than you were be tasting it before. All right, so I've got, my soup is coming up in temperature. I do have some milk, which is gonna cool it just a little bit. That's not going to hurt a thing because it'll come right back again. Now, this dish only has to be brought up to 165 degrees, all right? We're looking to make it safe, not to curdle all of our ingredients, okay? There's only one ingredient left here unless I decide to put in a bunch of vegetables. And that ingredient is this right here. So this right here is a shout out to Lisa P who got in my comments on my uh, pantry video and said potato flake soup sounds interesting so Lisa guess what this is your soup made it for you potato flake soup comes out fantastic there's your option when you have a good full pantry all right, 79, let's see what we got, 141, nope, not hot enough yet, needs to come up, 165, and we are done. All right, let's take a look at my thermometer here again, and get it right down in here, and see what kind of a reading I get. Let me get my hand off of that so you can get 152, 56, 7, Okay, so we're in that range. We got 10 degrees more. Nope, 166, 170. Hey, we're good. I just need to stir it a little better, that's all. There we go. And I turned the burner off. So we have our soup ready to go right there. The quantity of everything that we use today, this is simple enough. It was three cups of potato flakes four cups of water, three cups of broth, two cups heavy cream, eight ounces shredded cheddar cheese. I like using sharp or extra sharp. One to one and a half cups of diced meat of your choice. I used ham, any meat will work for this. One medium onion, two medium carrots, two cloves of garlic, and on your spices, we went with three teaspoons of the white pepper and two teaspoons of that mustard. It makes such a delicious soup, so simple, so humble. There is an optional ingredient you can use here that's MSG, and if you want that, one half a teaspoon of MSG to the entire pot is more than enough. It just makes the flavors pop nothing more. I've got this beautiful soup. I've really been looking forward to this. This is, believe it or not, one of my favorite soups. Um, I absolutely love this stuff. It's totally nutritious as all get out 
it's delicious as can be and it's good for you all the way around it's good for the budget also this one is inexpensive to make and if you've got a well stocked pantry it's going to be not a problem for you there we have it all right there we go oh, i can't wait to enjoy this sometimes you know if you're wanting it to be really crisp and beautiful if you've got a little drip or something that's on that edge just take a paper towel or something like that and clean it up it can make something that much better and a little thing like that can be so distracting sometimes you just drip a little bit and you don't want that messy now another thing you can do here and i want you to think about this think about a couple of curls of carrot on there or something green just some simple parsley a simple garnish can really change a dish like this use that if you wish it can set it off and make it special for you it's not a very difficult soup to make yeah there's a couple of different processes but you know it's not like anything real super difficult Mm. Man, you know the flavors. Mm. Incredible. It's sweet, it's savory, and it's packed with so much flavor, it's indescribable. But I'm going to say this it's a fantastic soup, definitely something you should try. I'm going to enjoy my bowl of soup today. This is my lunch, and I certainly hope you enjoy yours as well. Thank you very much for watching Texas Cooking today. If you would, take a look at the rest of my channel. There is a lot of videos there to my subscribers. Folks, thank you very much. I do appreciate you, and if you would, if you haven't done so, please subscribe. You know, click the little bell so you get the notifications. That way, you'll know when I'm posting, which is, for the most part, regularly on Thursdays, and every once in a while I throw something in as an extra. Um, let's see here. Oh, description box right down below. Take a look there. There is my website also where you're going to get stuff like this, the recipes for stuff like this, and uh, well, there's a few other good items there. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking today, and folks, have a good, good day. Bye-bye.